people. So, let's talk off and timer. Uh, thinking about, so I saw it last night. Uh, I like, you know, if you already watched the channel or know the channel, I did Barbie. I got to see an early preview of Barbie, so that allowed me to see Oppenheimer yesterday. And normally, to my best abilities, I try to do the reviews as soon as I finish the movie with a fresh perspective. You know, hey, this is how I feel. This is what I got from the movie. But with Oppenheimer, granted, it was the nine o'clock showing that I saw. I didn't get out my movie theater until about 12.30, which means I didn't get out get home till almost one. So I didn't feel like recording that late. But I'm really glad I didn't record as soon as I did. Because I had to really sit and think about what I was going to say about this movie. So let's go ahead and talk about, you know, Oppenheimer a little bit and I'll give my thoughts and views on the movie. So, you know, Oppenheimer is about uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, who is, who led the project, who led the Manhattan Project, the project developed in World War II to create the atom bomb that was helped to officially end World War II. But in terms also, it's really started the nuclear arms race. And it's about, you know, him, you know, his life up to the Manhattan Project, you know, his life during the Manhattan Project, and then the fallout of the Manhattan Project. And what it did to his life professionally and what it did to his life personally. And it's one of those, it's one of those movies where, I mean, yes, with three hours, you're going to get a lot. But it's one of those things, even now I'm still gripping to how I feel about this. It's almost hard to put it into words what I, what I saw last night. Because... Yes, it's a biopic, but when you're when you're watching them build the bomb and watching them put everything together, it starts to feel like a sports drama, right? When and you know when they test the bomb, you're like, oh man, is the bomb gonna work? Is the bomb gonna work? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna do this? Like you don't know what's gonna happen. I felt the same way when I saw Air, where. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, are they going to sign Michael Jordan and I'm wearing my Jordans while I'm watching the movie? Like, duh, yes, they're going to win. They're going to, this bomb is going to work. But it's just that, oh man, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And to see the bomb explode is incredible because knowing how practical Christopher Nolan is, it's extremely incredible how that all plays out. Um, but then it turns into almost a political thriller where, you know, the government starts to question, you know, Oppenheimer's ties to communism because, you know, in the movie he explains, and he does a great job explaining his viewpoint on communism. And while he was not a communist, the individuals around him, especially the ones closest to him, were either in the Communist Party, had ties to the Communist Party. And so in terms, because he didn't denounce them, he in turn is questioned as well. And you see, you know, how that plays out. Uh, the movie stars, Killian Murphy, who, you know, for comic book fans, you may know him from the Dark Knight movies, the Batman, Nolan's Batman movies. Also, 28 Days Later, I actually got introduced to him in Red Eye, which he was really good in Red Eye. Uh, the movie, you're going to spend a lot of your time <laughs> pointing out, oh, I know that actor. I know that actress. I know, oh, they're in this movie? Didn't know they were in this movie either. Wow, they got that person in this movie? So I'm just going to say, say out, call out the big ones. And maybe a couple of surprises I had no idea were even in this movie. Um... You have 
Robert Downey Jr., who plays uh, Straws, who is a politician who is, well, not really a politician, but sort of like the, you know, uh, somebody in the, in the political realm that has a relationship with Oppenheimer. Whether it's good or bad is up to your, you know, is how you determine it. Uh, you have Emily Blunt, who plays Oppenheimer's wife. And her role in his life, you know, not just being the wife of him, but also, you know, in terms of what he's going through and the, and the role she plays. Even she has, you know, her own issues and things that she deals with as well that's shown in this movie. Uh, you have Florence Pugh, who plays, you know, someone who's very close to Oppenheimer, um, but also is a tie to the Communist Party as well. Uh, a couple of others, I will say those are like your, oh, and Matt Damon. Matt Damon plays the general who is in charge of the, you know, forming the Manhattan Project and is the one who actually hires uh, Matt Damon. Funny thing is, he's also the same guy who created the Pentagon, so I learned that in the movie, which I thought was pretty cool. So I would say those are like your, your five main stars. Now, within that realm, though, there are a lot of actors in this movie, from Jason Isaacs to Josh Hartnett to, um, uh, oh my God, because there, there's some I want to say, some I don't want to say. Matthew Modine is in the movie. You're, you're going to see a lot of actors that no one has worked with previously show up in these movies. Uh, Tony Goldwyn's in the movie. Um, oh man, there's just there's just so many to name. Uh, else, uh, Anson Elkra, Anson Elkra, I can never say his name right, but the guy who played Han Solo in the Solo movies, who, I'm not gonna lie, when I saw Solo, I wrote him off, but after seeing him in this and and Cocaine Bear, I completely misjudged him. Um, but yeah, there's just so many actors I don't want to. There's even there's an actor that's in the movie that plays a character. I had no idea it was him until I looked it up. I was like, holy crap, he was him. I did not see like I I did not put that together. Um, but it, if you know who the actor is, it it makes no it makes no surprise. It's no surprise that you would not recognize this actor in this role. But again, it's one of those movies where I'm just going to come right out and say it. Usually at this point, I do a pro-con, pro-con. This movie gets five stars. This movie is incredible. I cannot think of a single con. And I, I went home and I could not fall asleep last night because I could not stop thinking about this movie. If so, when I did my review for Barbie, one thing I should have noted with Barbie is whoever did production design for the Barbie movie is going to win that Academy Award, right? If Christopher Nolan is not nominated for Best Director, Bob Howard is not nominated for Best Picture, Kelly Murphy is not nominated for um, Best Actor, if Emily Blunt and Florence Pugh. Definitely Emily Blunt is not nominated for Best Supporting Actress. If Robert Downey Jr. is not nominated for Best Supporting Actor, then that's, that's a robbery. Truth be told, if Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., and Christopher Nolan don't win, it's a, it's a, it's a robbery. This movie is a masterpiece. And I, I, I didn't want to throw that word around lightly. What this movie does, how it explains its narrative, how it weaves you through and throws something here, but that you think has nothing to do with the movie and it brings it back and shows the importance of why, yes, this scene was included here is incredible.
it's one of those things where as you're watching the movie you are completely engaged in what's going on who Oppenheimer is who are the folks around him how this all encompasses into the narrative you know there's times you you are mad with Oppenheimer there's times you're rooting for him there's times you're you're sympathizing with him because what the movie shows is that he is flawed right while he is a genius he is completely flawed he is not perfect you know while he is you know somebody who believes in peace he has to create and harbinger a death because that's how you achieve peace in him coming to grips with that is a is, you know a great narrative piece and one thing if you haven't seen the movie there's parts in the movie that are in color there's parts in the movie that are black and white do not let that scare you because it's actually genius what Chris Nolan does look at and I'll give you a little cheat sheet here. There's no spoilers, but think about the stuff in color being one narrative. <clears throat> the stuff in color being one narrative. The stuff in black and white being another narrative. And those two narratives clashing, but telling the story itself. It's so good. The cast. Look, I'm a I'm a MCU mark, right? I love the MCU, right? been a fan I mean I've been a fan of Marvel movies since God. been a fan of Marvel since the, since the 92 X-Men cartoon series like I've always been a fan of Marvel so of course I was a fan of Robert Downey Jr. I knew Robert Downey Jr. before Iron Man don't get me wrong I knew him but you know I wouldn't say I was like the biggest RDJ fan but Iron Man I fell in love with him this is the best role I've ever seen him in. This is that, oh, that's that Robert Downey Jr. that everyone said was a great actor. This is it, because he's not, he's not Iron Man in this movie. He's not Tony Stark. But what he is in this movie, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, for you, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you are engaged with his character. And where he stands in terms of his relationship with Oppenheimer. Because the truth is, he is he is the second star in the movie. Uh, you know, Killian Murphy, who does a phenomenal job. Honestly, Killian Murphy's best role as well. Where he stands with Oppenheimer, you are, you know, just, you, you, you are just engaged in his story as you are with Oppenheimer's. And, I mean, it's not just an Emily Blunt brings in a very, very, very incredible performance. Especially, there is a scene where it's her doing her thing. And that's the one thing that I love what Christopher Nolan does in this movie. He lets, when the actors have a scene, they have a scene. You know, Florence Pugh in the role she plays. It's not as big as Robert Downey Jr.'s Emily Blunt, uh, Killian Murphy, and even Matt Damon, who Matt Damon does a great job as well in his role. Her role's not as big, but her role is just as impactful, right? And that's the thing, like I said, everybody has their role in the movie. When they need to be impactful, it is impactful. You feel it. You are on that roller coaster with them. Like I said, I can't say enough about this movie. And even though this is a biopic, you can look this stuff up. I don't want to spoil the experience. Um, I mean, like I said, it's it's filled to the brim with actors you will recognize. Josh Peck is in the movie. Uh, Jack Quaid is in the movie. Like, there's there's so many different actors. With well, somebody who I was pleasantly surprised to see, because I've been a fan of theirs since the night is Josh Hartnett, who has a very significant role. I would almost say he is, and this is a long list of actors there in the movie. He's in that like bottom 10, bottom top 10 of like 
how much they play a part in this movie. He plays a huge part in this movie um, in the role he has as one of Oppenheimer's colleagues and eventually someone who was on the Manhattan Project as well. But, you know, it was great to see him in this movie as well because, like I say, I've always been a fan of his since the faculty. Um, you know, I've always, you know, been a, been a huge fan of him and, you know, he's somebody, I, I will, I can't wait to see more of him because he, he does a fantastic job in this movie as well. They all, everyone does, I can't think of a single person where it's like, oh, this person's on the screen. You know, everyone brings it in this movie. And that's a testament to Christopher Nolan. Another thing I struggled with was trying to rate this movie in terms of Christopher Nolan movies. Outside of the Dark Knight, I truly believe this is Christopher Nolan's best film. I can't put it over The Dark Knight because The Dark Knight personally means so much to me. The Dark Knight was the movie that I that made me fall in love with films all over again. So, it, yes, it's going to take a lot. It might be a better movie than The Dark Knight. But to me personally, I just cannot put it above The Dark Knight. But it is by far, hands down, Christopher Nolan's best movie. For, for that movie, to, for not a single punch to be thrown... To not for a single for not a single person to be killed in the movie. I mean, someone dies, but it's not like oh, you know, they're not murdered, they're not killed. You know, I was on the edge like it was an action movie. I, I have the same thrills I felt in Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. I felt in Oppenheimer, which is insane. But I would have to rank this is. Outs again, outside of Dark Knight. Dark Knight's 1A, Oppenheimer's 1B. And who knows, maybe over time, my thoughts would change on Oppenheimer and the Dark Knight if I see it again. Going, looking at Oppenheimer as a whole, I told you Barbie was probably my favorite film of the summer so far, right? One of my favorite films. Oppenheimer, yes, is one of my favorite films, but it's for a totally different reason. I not only think Oppenheimer might be the best film of the year so far, I think it's gonna go down as one of the most important films of the decade. What I mean by that is, and this, this, this opinion may vary, but I'm, I would wager to say, I would put Oppenheimer in that list of movies like as recent as like get out you know the social network you know the movies of the 2010s if i go to the 2000s you know i say the dark knight i say the departed right if i go into movies of the 90s i say terminator 2 titanic um Pulp Fiction, um, Forrest Gump, Shawshank Redemption, those movies, you know, and you even go back further to, you know, say The Godfather Part 1 and 2, uh, Taxi Driver, you know, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Gone with the Wind, you know, and I think the bet, one of the best movies to really describe this to, Citizen Kane. I would argue Oppenheimer could probably go into that conversation. That's how strongly I feel about this movie. It's, it's, it, there may be some flaws, there may be some stuff I need to watch again. From what, for, from what I got in that movie, for me to sit there for three hours and be completely engaged, not even wanting to look at the time, to know where I was because I did not want to ruin that moment. I, I it's 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 incredible. You must see. Congratulations, Christopher Nolan. Congratulations to the cast, Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Robert Robert Downey Jr. You didn't get your Oscar for Tony Stark. You're going to get your Oscar for this. 
uh, and same thing with you, Killian Murphy. You you're more than likely going to get your Oscar for this as well. And Christopher Nolan, same to you. I would be surprised if this is the movie that gets you your Oscar. Um, yeah, this movie does it. it. It's a masterpiece. Go see it. Go see Barbie too. You know, Barbenheimer. This might be the, the one of those weekends where two absolutely great movies are currently in theaters. Go see them both. But definitely, definitely go see Oppenheimer. But with that being said, again, five stars. First five star review that I've recorded. Maybe some other ones that may be down the line or maybe that I haven't seen yet. But five stars, hands down. With that being said, if you've seen the movie, let me know in the comments. You know, I got to start putting my social media up here too. You know, uh, I'm at uh, Blurred Lines on Instagram, Blurred Lines on, I think Blurred Lines 2020 on Twitter. I'll put it in, in the description. But no, you know, comment, like, subscribe. You know, tell me what you thought of Oppenheimer. You know, did you enjoy it? Did you feel the way I felt? You know, were there any f cons or flaws that I may have not seen that you saw that you, you know, Wanted, wanted to take a look, you know, that you want to talk about as well. Let me know. And with that being said, this is Greg from Blurred Lines signing out. And, you know, go enjoy Barbenheimer weekend because it's actually worth it. With that being said, you guys have a great day, great weekend, and I'll see you all next week when I believe it is the Haunted Mansion. Maybe. We'll see. But with that being said, very exciting out. You guys have a good one. Remember, five star, first five star movie, Oppenheimer. Let's go.